talk about uh, plastic boats, which all of us have. Uh, they're all made out of polyester resin. Um, so uh, if you're wanting to do some repairs on your boat, you probably shouldn't use epoxy because you don't have an epoxy uh, carbon fiber boat. You don't have a, a, a composite boat. You have a, a, a boat made out of polyester resin. So any repairs that you do on it should be polyester resin also. But first I'm gonna kind of go through how they make the boat. Uh, so you can kind of understand how you're going to repair it because you'll see how it's made. Um, they start out with a mold of a hull. Kind of looks like so. And normally it has some feet on it to keep it standing up straight. That looks like my sex education class. <laughs> <laughs> the first layer going into the, into the boat is uh, the gel coat and it gets sprayed to the inside of the mold and so they spray this gel coat on the inside of the mold and after the gel coat they spray a, a layer of black uh, catalyzed resin so this has got a, a layer of black in it When you lay the glass cloth in, um, if there's a bubble in the glass cloth, it shows up as a white bubble and shows up really good on the black background. So the guys that are actually rolling out the uh, fiberglass cloth can see those white bubbles against the black background. So anytime you, you do a repair on your hull, you'll see as, as you get through the uh, white gel coat or blue gel coat, there'll be a black uh, layer underneath it. And after that, another color? Yeah. Uh, they start laying in multiple layers of, of glass cloth. I'm just going to go halfway here. Lots of layers of glass cloth. <clears throat> now up until probably about the mid to late 60s, um, a lot of boats were made out of, with a chopper gun. A chopper gun is a gun that shoots uh, fiberglass rope and there's a blade comes by and chops that rope into, into small strands and they just go in and, and spray that and the guy goes in and roll it. But they found out that the, uh, uh, the hulls were not very strong. I think the boating society said you can't do that anymore so all boats made in like in from the 70s on are made out of glass cloth. Now glass cloth comes in a lot of different uh, um, textures it, from finer than this which is uh, down to almost like silk up to uh, heavier weaves, up to some that's as big as my fingers that are uh, big, big roven, ro roven woving uh, mats. They still sell um, this uh, um, unidirectional mat, which is a bunch of fibers that are all pressed together and then starched so that it, it stays together. They use a lot of this for reinforcing areas, um, but they don't actually build hulls out of it. Now you may see some decks or you may see some liners that are made out of it, but the actual hull has to be glass cloth now. Ray just found a, a blister or a, an eggshell in his uh, gel coat on his brand new boat. And what that is, was like I was telling you, you've got the mold which sits here and what they did was they left a, a bubble in it like that. So there's just the gel coat right there uh, without any glass or uh, um, mat behind it. And so it just leaves a very, very thin layer of gel coat. And if you bump it, you'll crack through that eggshell and you end up with a pretty good si size hole in your boat. Normally you see those more uh, like, on, like on a corner of a lazarette, uh, something like uh, where it came out of the mold. Say the mold was like so, um, and they put, put the first layer of uh, gel coat in. The gel coat is really nice and tight against the mold and then when they put the, the glass cloth in they miss a spot and they bridge it over like this. And so all this area right in here is just gel coat and so when you bump it it'll, it'll knock a hole in it. We'll draw our, our, our blue gel coat again. Which is a blue layer and then we got a black layer underneath it. And then a bunch of layers of glass cloth. Dave, is the black layer, it's, it's liquid, it's like the gel coat? It's just exactly like the gel coat and it's pigmented black. Okay. 
You're going to have a, a couple of different things that you're going to want to repair. Um, one of them will be maybe you, you mounted a compass or you mounted a gauge and you decided you didn't want it there, so you're moving it over to a different place. Um, so you'll have some holes um, in your fiberglass. So I'll drop a hole there. The other one uh, that we have uh, would be just like a, like a big old gouge in the, in the, like maybe you ran into something. And then you'll have uh, stress cracks uh, or spider cracks. Those are just like little lines. And typically what you'll, you'll find is you'll, you'll have like a, maybe a cleat. Um, oh, a cleat here. How's that for a cleat, huh? Got a couple holes on the top of it. And coming out from the cleat, you'll have these stress cracks. And what that's caused from is the fiberglass will move pretty easily. But the gel coat is, is pretty hard stuff. That's how they get the really good shine on it. So the gel coat will crack. But it's not a real, it looks ugly, but it's not uh, structurally damaging. Uh, so we'll say we got a stress crack here. So the first thing that you want to do with any of these is to fair them out uh, to where we just don't fill a square hole like this. We need to fair this surface out like this. <clears throat> so that we've got something to fill. Kind of like that, and this uh, this guy here, we want to we want to smooth him out to where he's nice and nice and smooth everywhere, and fared out to to the surface. And this stress crack, um, these are really good. And it, I think everybody's old enough here to know what these are. But the new kids don't know what these are. You probably buy one at an antique show at an antique store because I don't think they're available anymore. But if you sharpen these up really good, you'll be able to go into those stress cracks, and you'll just be able to kind of gouge them out a little bit to make them thicker so you can get some resin in them. We want that to look kind of like this. Just so that we can get some, uh, some resin into that crack. Kind of like so. Okay? So, now the next thing is, if you remember we had the mold on the outside and then we put gel coat against that mold and then we put the black uh, uh, resin against that and then glass cloth it. The reason that the gel coat cures nice and hard is because there's no air against it. Uh, what happens when you catalyze the resin, I'm going to do a big crack here now, or a big area that we're going to fix. <clears throat> so these are uh, polyester resin molecules. So after we've catalyzed our resin, we've put our, our, our pigment in to make it the color that we want it, and we've uh, uh, we put some thickening agent in it to, to make it uh, like a paste rather than a, than a liquid, and we're gonna screen it off even with the top of our, um, our, our repair. Those top molecules, the, the catalyst in the resin, what it does is it excites the molecule and they start rubbing against each other and they start generating heat because they're rubbing against each other. These top guys, these guys down here are all rubbing against each other and they're starting to get hot. They need to get to about 140 degrees in order to kick the resin over to, to make it hard. These guys don't have anything to rub against. So we have to put a layer of something on top of it. I'm gonna use red again. I don't have any other colors. We need to put something on top of it here to insulate those molecules, it's kind of like a blanket to keep them warm. So there's a couple of things that you can use. Uh, saran wrap works really good. So after you've, you've made your repair, uh, you've screened it off nice and smooth, if you just put some saran wrap over it, nice and, nice and tight, that'll keep the air away from it and it's, it's thick enough that those molecules will stay warm and it'll cure that surface. Otherwise, your top surface, these guys that are on the surface are gonna stay all sticky and gooey and never, never will cure. So you don't want, you can't polish a sticky gooey surface. So saran wrap works good. Um, any of your mold releases, you can brush those on or spray them onto your, uh, onto your repair. They work really good. Um, where's my, scotch tape works really good. If you got some stretch cracks and you're just doing a little screed of a, to fill in some stretch cracks, put some scotch tape over the top of them, that'll uh, keep them warm until they cure.